Hi everyone, welcome to another um, colouring video. This time we are going to be working in the Ink House by Rory Dobner and we're going to be doing this page here. I'm not going to actually do the butterflies. I've seen these done in lovely bright colours but they are actually printed in the blue colour um, from the Ink House. Um, some of the items um, on each page have a bit of blue on them and like the ink down here and things like that. So I'm going to leave them for now. What I'm going to concentrate on is the caterpillar and the bucket. I thought it would be fun. I'm just going to tuck my book under my tin of, of um, colours. I've got a piece of paper behind the page to protect it, as I always do. Now for this particular book, I have used polychromos for every page so far. So I'm going to keep going with that. Um, there isn't a particular reason. It's just how I've started and how I've decided to continue. Now, we have some shading already here for us, which is quite handy. It's almost a grayscale um, type picture, so we can borrow this and uh, use it to help us. Now, the bucket here, um, I think it's a bucket, and the hook I'm going to do in silvery grey, um, and then we'll do the rest, I have to think about the rest. We've got this sort of um, saxophone which we might do in gold, might not, I have a think. I'm going to start with the darkest grey I'm going to use, which is cold grey 6. You can't see because I'm quite zoomed out, but I think I'm going to do all of it in one go, so I think I need to be zoomed out and I hope it's enough for you to see. So I'm going to use this darkest grey. Um, let's put it there, hopefully you can see. Um, so I'm looking at where has been marked in the darkest grey colours and I'm just going to use my dark grey pencil over the top and it just helps me. So although it can look a bit daunting and complex, I think by having these marks here for us already, it actually helps. So I'm just looking at those darkest areas. I'm trying to put a more colour down on the actual real darkest bits and a bit less on the rest. Um, down here. And hopefully it will work for us. Um, I think I'll put a bit under here. But I think I'll. I can do a bit down here. I'm pressing less hard. Whoops, going out of the lines. And a bit here. And there, look. I'm not pressing particularly hard. And up here. Because I want to make sure... I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's part of this, so I'm just going to do it in these colours too, I don't really know. Sometimes on these books, on all books, we have to do a little bit of guessing as to what we think certain things are. This guy's got a very groovy looking cap on, hasn't he? I think that's pretty cute. Now, to make this silver, I'm going to have to leave some white bits to look like shine. So we need to be careful of that. And it's always good to be aware of that right from the beginning. So you don't accidentally sort of colour everything. So really, you can barely see that I've done anything. But we're going to now go to the cold grey 5. I'm just going to move my remote control out of the way. So cold grey 5, and we're going to just put down a bit more. And just sort of start extending a little bit the areas that we've coloured in. And see how this bit is completely white, we can leave that completely white to make it look more shiny. And taking that bit all the way to the corner though. It, uh, it's important to have enough grey to make it look like we've got a bit of um, 
to contrast with the white areas to make it look shiny. So I'm going to put a bit more in there. And you can go over bits that you've done already and just extend that colour up and down a bit and around. Like that. Now here. See I'm going to leave a bit of white there. A shine. And under him here we'll leave a few bits. And you don't want to overdo it. Like we can't leave all that white or else it's too much. But we'll get there in a minute. Same as here. That's quite a big white expanse. So what I'm going to do... Bring in a bit of colour in some areas and then leave a bit like that. And then we've got, it looks more like shine. I think so anyway. Now all the way down this side this time. Fairly hard there. Like, oh, can you hear my, I put my dishwasher on just now when I made a coffee. You can you hear it draining away, gurgling in the kitchen? The sound carries a lot in our house, which is why I know that when our builders are here, there's no way I'm going to be able to record, even if I'm shut in my room. It's just everything is so noisy, but it's okay. I'm working hard to get you videos still. Now I'm just going to take, start to sort of fade it. I'm using the pencil on its side on a sort of blunt end just to get a little bit of colour. We'll do the same from the other direction. So I hope everyone's well. It's Monday morning. Um, it's my children's last week at college this week. So um, my one son particularly is very excited. There's only one week left. In fact, he's got tomorrow off as a study day. So he's only got four days really. Um, my other son's got a few half days. He's got this afternoon off actually. So uh, it's uh, looking forward to having the, I thought it was 10 weeks, but I've calculated it's eight and a half weeks off. It's quite a long time, isn't it? But they've worked hard and they're going to do some work in the holidays. So I'm just bringing that in from either side to make their sun shine. Now I'm going to work up here. So it's been lovely having them home. I love having them home, even though half the time they're plugged into a computer headphones on, laughing away to themselves and me going, what's the joke? And I go, no mum, I can't tell you, it's too naughty. All right, you won't get it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> possibly not. It depends. But uh, I think sometimes they um, think that I'm very naive. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but uh, anyway. I'm just going to try and bring some colour in from each side on this to try and make it look a bit more rounded. If we can make it darker on the edges and lighter in the middle, it looks like it's more rounded in shape, which is what it is. It's a sort of hook, isn't it? It's, where's well, the handle? So I'm going to put a little bit on the top, even though this is drawn in white, like that, just to make try and emphasise that rounded shape. Now here we're quite dark underneath. And uh, here, but I don't want that completely white on the edge. I'm just putting a bit of dark colour there. Now I'm not actually going to swap to a lighter grey. I'm going to keep with this one now. Um, I find that it's to get your silvery look. If you use a darker grey, you get more of a contrast. I did say this before between the white and the dark, and uh, it helps give more of an impression of shine got a few marks here I'm just going to go over but still trying to leave some white but maybe not quite as much as has been left and here too a little bit on the top but lots down at the bottom Gently bring it in, leave 
some shine. There we go. So I think, hmm, let's just see. I think we need a little bit more down here. So these, I think, we're just bringing a bit more. So there isn't quite such a big area of white on them. Like that. And this bit too. So there is some white, but not not quite such a thick line of white. There we go. Okay, now saxophone. We're going to come in a lot closer for that. Because we've got a lot less clues with how to uh, how to colour it. Let's put them in the middle. There we go. Okay, we're going to use um, gold. And I'm going to start with my darkest gold. Darkest gold? No, with my darkest brown, which is the walnut brown. I'm going to think about where it's going to be the darkest. And this is always the trickiest bit of um, doing this. I'm just going to sharpen. Because you have to think about where the shadow is going to be. And it hasn't actually been marked for us. So I'm putting a little bit here and there. I'm thinking along the bottom of here. The side of there. Here. Around the edges of where the different bits are, you know, all the buttons. I don't know what they call them on the saxophone. I guess they call them buttons. A bit under there. And I'm thinking under here. Like that. Okay, there's the start. Then we're going to move on to a lighter brown. Um... I think we'll go for the, it doesn't really matter too much, um, we'll go for the Bistra. We all need sharpening. There we go. Bits on my desk. Right. And we sort of extend those darker areas a little bit. We need to leave space for what were for other colours. So the bottom of here. Now be careful there because there's a space which would be white. Now I'm going to put a bit around the edge as well. to help it look shinier if we have a darker bit of brown on the edge. Now we're going for quite a lighter one. Whoops. This is the brown ochre. I'm going to go over the top and just slightly extend those darker areas, particularly here, here. Sure, what that bit is. I don't, I'm, I don't play the saxophone, my dad does, but uh, I don't really know what that is supposed to be. I'm just fiddling, really, putting bits here and there. Now, green gold, which is probably the polychromous pencil I couldn't do without. This is um, actually only my second, I think my third green gold that I've had. So I hope you can, it's hard to describe what I'm doing, I hope you can just see 
and I'm just sort of extending those areas where I've made it a little bit darker. Okay, now onto our yellows. I'm going to jump to a dark Naples ochre. I don't know how easy it is for you to see that, I'm sorry. Um, I seem to be a bit random in where I choose to colour. I really should just go from top to bottom. <laughs> Make it easier for you, sorry. heard my dad play for quite a while. I haven't visited them for a while. Now it's holidays or when it once it the holidays start fully. Um, like cadmium yellow. Um, we'll visit there a little bit more regularly and see my parents. It's quite tricky for me to do it in term time because um, I have to be back to cook tea and Sometimes the children are at home and I don't always have to be here for them, but it's nice to be. I'm sort of enjoying them while I can because I know, you know, they'll soon be off doing their own thing. I'm going to hang with mum. So, there, I'm going to leave that there like that. So, there is our saxophone. And we have our caterpillar. I haven't really thought through what colours to do him. I'm thinking, mm, yeah, I've done this colour combo a few times lately and I really like it. But I don't know if I've done it on video, I can't remember. So you're going to need your light thalo green and a dark turquoisey type blue. Um, probably, yeah, the Helio turquoise. Okay. And the light thalo green. And start with the turquoise and do the darker areas. Now again here, um, Rory has shaded areas for us, so I'm going to use that as a guide. You can see the crosshatch shading here. So that's what I'm going to go over with this dark blue. And it makes it nice and easy for me. I don't need to worry about where would be shadowy. Um, where the crosshatch and the dark pieces are heavier, I'm, I'm putting more layers down. As it fades, I'm fading my layers. Um, the black I'm leaving as black. That will work out beautifully well. Now, I always find these pages very daunting when I look at this book. They're beautifully drawn, which makes them part part of the reason for them being so daunting but also they seem very detailed but when you look closely you can see that all the cross hatching and details are there to help us know where to shade so uh, it can actually make it a lot easier and I find that is true of other some other books um, Kirby Roseanne is similar in that there are often um, sh areas to show you where to shade and also uh, Malpomene Chatsipanagiotu her books um, Circle of Life and oh I nearly coloured that that's the hat I'll not do the hat now I can't work out where his eye is if he's got one I can't see one unless it's there they're not going to worry so I'm just following this crosshatch, nice and simple. Then I'm going to use my light thalo blue, green, <laughs> light thalo green, and just go over everything, not over the black. I did there, I shouldn't have done. Don't go over the black. Leave that nice and black so it stands out. I think these colours together fun. The dark blue seems to make the 
green look more vibrant somehow. I don't know why they just work together. So there are two versions of this book if you're looking to get one. Um, there is a hardback, which is what I've got, which is um, from Amazon. But there's also a Colouring Heaven version, which is paperback and single-sided. And I think, as much as I love this hardback, the look of it is absolutely beautiful. I've not seen the Colouring Heaven one, to be fair, but because it's hardback, it just feels really special. But in a way that makes it more daunting and also it's quite hard to keep it open and colour it and you're sort of afraid of spoiling it so I think in a way the Colouring Heaven version could be better with regards to that and you're not going to be worried about spoiling it so much it's paperback um, I don't know if it's still available for sale though but if it is I will put a link I'll put a link in the description so that you can have a little look I realise that shipping to the US can be a little bit tricky with Colouring Heaven, but they do sell their books in some shops in the US, but I don't know whether they're easily available in all branches. I think um, they have them in Barnes & Noble, but whether they would have this one or not, I don't know how old it is, um, so I don't know. And also I don't know whether every picture is included in it you know whether it's a full book or just uh, sort of excerpts or not so that could be tricky like this is a sort of double page so whether um whether both pages are included or not i don't know i don't i've never seen a flip through so i really have no idea but uh, i'm sure there is a flip through that you could have a look at. I would always do that before buying a book. I know some people like to order and then have the joy of looking through it on their own, but uh, I like to look, what I tend to do, is I look at a flip through of a book, decide if I want it, if I do, I'll put it on my wish list. Then I don't watch another flip through. I trust that I was right the first time. And then when I eventually get the book, um, buy the book or, or get given the book or whatever I then have the joy of doing the flip through and I'm sort of half not really remembering what it was so that's quite fun I still can't decide what colour to do the hat I think I, I think I know it's another colour that I often put together with this one in uh, in my completed pages video at the end of July you will see a picture that I've done in these exact colours. Um, it's a Hannah Coulson picture. I'm just going to sharpen this pencil. Um, and it's a jellyfish and I did it with watercolour pencils um, but I did use these colours. This um, a sort of you know dark turquoisey blue and, and a sort of turquoise light greenish turquoisey greenish colour and uh, it was really good fun and then I put together with it the colours I'm going to do for the hat okay. so you will see it just seemed to work well but my page since doing that watercolour the page is really crumply um, wrinkled <laughs> and uh, so I'm not sure how it's going to be to colour on the back but uh, I'm sure I'll manage but I just used too much water. I know what the problem was. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, it, I'm learning. Hat. Um, where's the colours that I want? Um, yeah. Middle purple pink. In all the dark areas. Again, I'm using the crosshatch to guide me, so where it's darker here, I'll apply more. Where it's lighter, I'll apply less. Like that. 
and then I use the light magenta to fill in the gaps. That's really hard to read. So that bit's almost white, so I'm only going to do a really light layer. But I do want it all to be pink, I don't want any white. Because remember we're using white as our shine for our um for our metallics, so we don't want the hat to have any white on. There we go. Let's have a look. Let's come out. Now there he is, but we've still got this very top bit to do. Whoop. <laughs> across there we go so we've got the rope <clears throat> so I'm thinking we would the gold colors are quite nice but we don't want to make it too similar to the saxophone so we'll stick to some slightly darker browns we use the ones we used before um, walnut brown come in a little bit there we go and I'm going to use the walnut brown to do all the really dark bits I don't want to do it so dark that you can't see the black lines because they're showing us the um, the different parts of the um, rope, you know, these lines. So we want to make sure we can still see them. So if you colour so many layers that they start to disappear, then you might need to draw them back in because I think they're important. Is there an ink bottle there? Huh. There's a little insect down here as well, I noticed. Hmm, what to do with that? Leave it. We won't colour it or leave it. That's what we'll do with it. <laughs> so one on every page. I haven't noticed one on any other pages I've coloured. Bistra. Yeah, I'm going to go around that. I'm just extending the colour that I've done. I'm going to put a little bit on that side too. Remembering that we're um, not going to go too yellowy because we don't want it to look like gold. So we need to extend our brown quite quickly. And then we're going to use the brown ochre. We'll probably um, finish up with this colour actually. I was thinking of going up to green gold but I think we won't. We'll just use this so sort of just keep fading towards the middle. There's an insect there as well. Hmm. Perhaps it's just an insect. I'm just going to colour around it. I just can't work out what that is. I think he's reading a newspaper. Yes, he is. He's one, there's one in the back that you're supposed to spot, isn't there? That's reading a newspaper. Now I'm going to have to look. There, if you spot them. Yeah. Huh. So I'm going to leave him uncolored. Gonna go around him. I'm just doing each one of these little bits individually so I can sort of get to grips with the shading. So I want to do a little bit darker at that end and then a lot darker here and lighter in the middle. It just helps me if I go do each one. That doesn't look right. There we go. And it will look slightly shiny, but we don't want it to really look shiny, so we've got to just. We want it to look rounded, not shiny. So we don't really want to leave too much white in the centre. I 
Now this rope is got has got this twisted around it. This is a bit of rope here. Well, it's just fraying. But we've got this bit twisted around. I'm trying to think about what to colour. I don't really want to bring attention to that. I don't think it's... We want to see our caterpillar. So I'm going to use my walnut brown to do that. I'm just going to colour it gently. Um, actually, fairly hard layer along the edge here. And fade that in. And the same here, because it will be slightly lighter in the middle just because it's a rounded shape. Now I'm going a little bit more slowly and gently a lighter layer towards the middle. As I say, we don't want white paper, but we want a lighter bit. I'm not going to change colour because it will look too warm. It's got cold brown. And we can just layer up on the edge until it looks just right. I'm going to do is just take notice of these lines and just colour a little bit underneath each one of them. There we go. Now let's come out, we can have a look at the whole thing. You can see my mess of pencils, let's push it up. Oops. Out a little more so you can see the whole page. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, you can't see the whole page because my camera is too low. One minute, let's just pull up just a tad. Hopefully, you can now see the whole thing. Yeah, there we go. So there he is. As I say, I'm not sure if I'm going to colour the butterflies yet, but I think that was quite enough to do today. Um, it's quite fun. I hope you like him. He's very vibrant. The idea was that he is the star of the page, so he really needs to stand out. So I hope that <laughs> I hope that's okay. I'm just going to give this page a little bit of a sweep. And there we go. So thank you for watching. I hope that was fun for you. Um, it's quite, it takes a lot of confidence, I think, to colour this book. So I hope that has helped you a bit and that you, uh, you will have a go. Um, you know, even if you don't want to do it quite as bright, you still have a go at the page. But thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>